Hello, welcome to the Hot Seat. I'm here with Dr Jonathan Hopkins to discuss the recent elections to the Catalan Parliament. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks. So first of all, what was this actual vote on, this election? Yeah, formally it's simply a regional election, an election to the Catalan Autonomous Parliament, which is the legislative body that governs those powers that Catalonia has, um, has control over. Um, but obviously, in, in practice, it was a different kind of election because it had been set up by the outgoing Catalan government uh, as a kind of, um, not a referendum on independence as such, but an appeal for a mandate to move forward to independence. So what's the overall picture, top line picture resulting from this uh, vote? Well, for a start, it's incredibly complicated because um, the Catalan party system is a multi-party system and no single party has a dominant position. What's more, the biggest political parties in Catalonia, the ones who traditionally have governed and had the most votes, all are losing ground. Uh, and there are lots of new parties on the scene that are gaining ground. So it's a very fragmented uh, picture. Um, the upshot of it is that as well as there being seven or eight different political parties with significant support, there is also, these parties are divided broadly into two blocks, one of which is in favour of moving towards independence and the other is broadly opposed, with then a, a third block in the middle constituted by the Catalan version of Podemos, which is unclear about whether it's in favour of independence or not, although it has expressed uh, a desire to actually hold a referendum. So what's the voting system at use? What's the impact that that has on the outcome? Well, it makes quite a big impact. Uh, it's a form of proportional representation, uh, so it's not first past the post like in the UK, but it's a form of proportional representation which has quite a number of distortions, mainly due to the overrepresentation of rural areas which have more seats than would be uh, the case if it was allocated in terms of population. So the upshot of that is that the governing party, Convergencia, which is a sort of centre-right Catalan nationalist party, is overrepresented by the system receives more votes than it would do uh, normally. And that means that also the coalition that they are leading alongside the other main Catalan Nationalist Party, which is called Esquerra Republicana, left Re Catalan Republicans, uh, they stood together as a coalition and both of these parties received more support in the areas which have greater representation. So even though they got considerably less than half the votes, they did end up with more than half the seats. So the pro-independence parties received 40% of the vote. So what does this tell us about the, the feeling towards um, sort of pro-independence in Catalonia? Well, clearly there's very strong support for independence. It's probably not majority support. So I think the evidence is from this vote that although it's very, very narrow, that independence is not quite over the hurdle yet. Uh, especially if you consider that 48% includes not only around just under 40% for the um, governing, outgoing governing parties, which was uh, together in a coalition called Junts Pel C, which means together for yes, yes for independence. Um, they had just under 40%. The remaining 8% of this pro-independence bloc belongs to a party which is on the extreme left, uh, CUP. And that party, although it is in favour of independence, disagrees on just about everything else with the other two parties. It's an anti-capitalist party, it's opposed to the European Union, it's opposed to NATO, um, opposed to just about everything but in favour of independence. So you can see that the pro-independence bloc is very divided um, amongst the different parties. So what are the sort of practical implications of that in terms of the sort of the running of the government of Catalonia in the immediate future? Yeah, it makes it incredibly complicated because even though uh, the um, Catalan nationalist coalition, the mainstream coalition, does have something very close to a majority of seats in, in, in the parliament, just about enough to get uh, Artur Mas, its leader, elected as president again, uh, it will need support from a small number of votes from, from other parties. And CUP, the anti-capitalist party, um, will not, it stated it will not support Mass in the presidential vote. So it could actually make it an extraordinarily difficult task for him to actually get himself elected and get his governing coalition uh, um, to, to be able to govern in, in Catalonia. So to, to look more broadly, what are the sort of political implications for, of this result for, let's take Spain and the wider picture? Well, this issue has been rumbling on for a while, ever since the mainstream Catalan Nationalist Party, Convergencia, 
decided to go for independence. In the past, it was always a party which would favored greater devolution to Catalonia, more powers for the Catalan parliament, and so on and so on. But it was not in favor of independence as such until about three years ago, in which it suddenly decided we're going to go with this, with this uh, particular policy aim. And the main reason for that uh, was that there was a growing support for independence in Catalonia, but also that their position as a party was under threat because of the emerging uh, pro-independence movements which were eating up part of their electorate. So they made a strategic move to try and protect their position by saying, yeah, okay, we're for independence as well. Uh, but it hasn't arrested the slide in their support. So the more mainstream, moderate, if you like, uh, components of uh, the pro-independence movement are getting weaker, the more radical elements are getting stronger. So that creates a very polarized situation in Catalonia because, of course, on the other side, around 50% of people voted for parties which were opposed to independence. So we have, Catalonia is divided right down the middle. Not only that, there's very strong support for independence, which is rejected without any nuances by the central government in, in Madrid, which is run by the con currently the Conservative uh, Popular Party. And the Socialist Party, the main opposition, is also equally opposed to independence. So you have a very strong head of steam behind independence in Catalonia and an equally strong rejection of the idea from the rest of Spain. So clearly, you know, there's a big conflict brewing here and uh, it's not going to go away quickly. And what are the factors sort of driving that head of steam for independence? Well, uh, partly, of course, there's a very, very long tradition of Catalonia having its own national, cultural, linguistic identity. Um, Catalonia has long had nationalist movements. Um, all, from the late 19th century, there have been political parties in Catalonia espousing um, you know, the protection of Catalan identity, sometimes talking about independence, but most of the time talking about more powers of its own, more independence from Madrid, if not necessarily leaving the Spanish state. On top of that, since the transition to democracy, Catalonia has had a great number of important policy um, 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 opportunities uh, devolved to it. For instance, it now controls, the Catalan parliament controls healthcare, it controls education, controls infrastructures, or at least part of infrastructure in Catalonia, has a, great, a good degree of fiscal independence. So the more these powers have accumulated, the more Catalan nationalists have wanted more. They've said, look, we can run things on our own, we don't need help from Madrid, um, you know, give us more power. Added to that, there is the fact that fiscally Catalonia, as a relatively rich region within Spain, is a net contributor to the Spanish budget, and Catalans are increasingly upset at how they're having to channel money to the rest of Spain, uh, particularly since they don't feel this is much appreciated by the Spaniards. And then finally, of course, the economic crisis uh, sharpens all of these tensions because, you know, the Spanish economy has taken a dive, Catalonia has suffered just as much as anyone else, and people are very unhappy with the situation and are seeking a way out. And does this make a referendum more or less likely? And crucially, what would the referendum be on? What is the difference yeah. between the current position and what independence would be and how different it would be? Well, I think you could probably say it makes a referendum more likely um, because now for the first time we have a very clear picture of how many voters are willing to vote for parties that are openly committed to independence. I think that makes a referendum more likely in the medium term. In the short term, it's not going to happen. The popular party, the governing party at the moment, has rejected that out of hand. But of course, there is an election coming up at the level of the Spanish national government too. And, and there's a good chance that power will change hands and that possibly a coalition led by the socialists and maybe some of the other parties would be more amenable to some kind of federal solution, uh, which may head off an independence vote or may... Um, or may simply delay it. It's not in, in, entirely clear. So you know, it's, it's hard to guess exactly what, what's going to happen, but clearly the problem is not going to go away. There's very strong support uh, for independence in Catalonia. There is equally strong hesitancy on, amongst many Catalans and certainly the rest of Spain um, uh, towards that idea, and it's going to be a source of tension for quite a while. So what's the um, sort of current position and what difference would independence make? Well, um, what hasn't really been very clearly defined, a little bit in the same way as Britain's debate about whether or not to leave the European Union, it's not really been defined exactly what that would mean. Of course, independence, the idea of an independent state, we know what that means. Uh, you've got your own army, you've got your own police force, you've got your own currency, and so on and so on. You have your own borders, you patrol your borders yourself. But of course, in the European Union, well, Spain is in the Schengen Agreement, so there isn't a border. 
Um, you can't create a new border between Catalonia and the rest of Spain within the EU, it wouldn't make any sense. Um, also in terms of defense, would you create a Catalan army? How much sense would that make uh, when Spain is part of NATO? So actually these days, the idea of creating an independent state doesn't mean the same thing as it did in the 19th century, especially within the European Union. To complicate matters further, it, the European Union has actually expressed uh, reluctance to allow Catalonia to remain in the EU if it does vote for independence. All of these issues have been kind of put on the back burner, but uh, the moment you get uh, a proposal for a referendum, they clearly will come out into the open, and it's not entirely clear what uh, the Catalan nationalists themselves themselves want in that regard. Great. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Okay. Rough thoughts. Pleasure.